Welcome to the Buck Stops here, and it's the Hall of Fame show. Episode 5, first week of February. And this is where we recap all the news that's Hall of Fame relevant. On the docket today, Evan Nolan and I, we're going to be discussing the Pro Football Hall of Fame, those who just got in, reactions for that, and seeing if I won a beer. Here's a spoiler, I never win. I never win bets against Evan. I don't know why I even bother. But, you know, that's what I do. Can't help it, especially when it comes to beer, which is probably my greatest love next to my wife and my dog. In that order, I think it's in that order. We're also going to be looking at the retirement of Eric Weddle. Is he a Hall of Famer? College Football Hall of Famer, for sure, but a Pro Football Hall of Famer? We're going to ask that question. Pete Rose is looking for a re reinstatement, and if he does get it, will he become a, a Baseball Hall of Famer? It's path is not simple, necessarily. And we're also going to be taking a look at, try, or trying to gauge, who is that one person who didn't vote for Derek Jeter? What kind of rationale did he or she have and without further ado, let's bring in Evan, and let's talk about all these wonderful Hall of Fame-related things. Evan, how you doing? Uh, recovering from the Mookie Betts trade, but other than that, I'm doing pretty well. How about ooh, you? Ooh, yeah. I'm doing really well, but yeah, I guess I don't really have any big trades that I have to worry about, mainly because the Jays don't have anyone that big worth trading. Yeah, but I mean, anytime you could trade your best player for a, uh, a, a, a an outfielder, which is good, and a guy who has gained eighty five pounds in the four years of his professional career, you got to do it. So, <laughs> what was the rationale behind that? Were they worried he wasn't going to resign? I mean, I guess that's what it was. I part of the you have to understand. I, I've talked about how much Boston fans have distrust for Red Sox ownership. It goes back to Terry Francona when he left and all of a sudden they said, brought up the whole thing about him being a uh, prescri prescription drug abuser. Uh, and they, every time someone goes out the door, they slander them. The slander hasn't been so bad so, so far with Mookie, but it basically is saying that Mookie knew that he was going to be a test case for the union and he definitely wanted to get to free agency. Mm. And so the Red Sox were afraid that uh, they weren't going to be able to resign him. Of course, they are the frickin' Red Sox and sell out every single game and have their own regional sports network and all sorts of stuff. So, And the guy who owns it's a billionaire and that thing's a cash cow. So, now that makes sense. But that is allegedly what they try to do. Of course, there's a good reason and the real reason for everything. And I think the real reason here is they want to get below the the luxury tax because an extra $12 million to a billionaire is, is just too much to, to handle. <laughs> so yeah, they, they would never be able to make that $12 million up. Of course they are paying $12 million to a, uh, a minor leaguer who has never made the majors. So, well, I, or I guess he's got a cup, cup of coffee in the majors. I guess you find but, your value it, where you can. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. You know, they, they're they still paying the Panda, by the way. Are they really? Yeah, yeah. He, he's making $5 million for the Red Sox this year. <laughs> they're still paying Manny. No way. I didn't realize that. Yeah. He, yeah, he's got like a million left on that thing. It was almost like a Bobby Bonilla thing that he had going on. Yeah. But yeah, they're paying, they're paying as much to Jackie Bradley Jr. Actually, less to... Uh, Jackie Bradley Jr. as they are to uh, um, to uh, Rosny, now who is it the other one there? But yeah, it's Rosny Castillo who is getting $14.27 million this year to play in Pawtucket as a 32-year-old. So anytime you have the opportunity to do that and trade your best player for a guy who's uh, the, the, the outfielder for Alaska is going to be pretty good, but the uh, they already are holding up because they have a 20 year old pitcher who's way overweight and is going to, and already has back problems. <laughs> so uh, that's what you need. In the 20 -year -old. Red Sox. Oh, hey, it's all good. All so, good. Uh, so yeah. one thing that we said we were going to talk about today, uh, the pro football hall of fame. Uh, one thing yep. I've sort of loved about social media is that all of this came out and I didn't have to watch David Baker and I didn't watch the show. <laughs> You didn't watch the show? No. No. It, well, it, it was weird because you had years passed. It seems like they nobody really knew who was getting in the Hall of Fame. And then they got announced up on stage and everybody was excited for it. It seemed like it leaked really, really early this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very, very uh, 
leaked that I think everything was already set in stone about an hour and a half before because I wanted to write that as soon as possible because selfishly I wanted to go out that night and I was able to do so and not have to yeah. watch again David Baker who is just someone I've seen way too much of uh, and is just starting to rub me a little bit the wrong way and maybe I still have a bit of a bad taste in my mouth for how it just sort of felt that Cower and Johnson might have jumped the line because they were television personalities. And when conspiracy theorists say that, I kind of might be with them on this one. Yeah, just because it's a conspiracy doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. Although there was the guy who came out with a 22-minute video today about how the NFL rigged the entire season so that Pat Mahomes would win the Super Bowl. That guy was wrong. But... uh, (laughs) uh, in terms of that, it it seemed a little bit strange. I understand Jimmy Johnson getting in. He had two Super Bowls and he has the, the, the trade chart that he came up with for the value of draft picks. And he was the general manager of that team and everything. But even Pittsburgh fans will tell you a large number of them that they don't feel that Cowher is a hall of famer. Um, And Cowher being a hall of famer actually probably, well, I don't know, probably, but extending the, conspiracy theory here a little bit may have affected which offensive lineman got the Hall of Fame from this class. I think you're a thousand percent right on that. I I really do. So we should, I guess, uh, look at the names here that did get in. The one that I'm personally the happiest for, uh, and I think you're probably feeling the same as I am, Steve Atwater. Yeah. Steve Atwater is, and Broncos Nation can rejoice that they got at least one of their two guys in uh, with Gradshaw not getting in still, although but the amount of talk about Gratishar would not surprise me if he's a senior connect uh, senior choice next year. Um, but yeah, it's great to see Atwater in. He's more than deserving. Uh, I think we talked last week that there were only three players who were starters on the uh, 70s, 80s, and 90s all-decade team who weren't in. And um, well, actually, none of those guys got in this time. But Atwater was on that second team and he was a hell hell of a player Mm -hmm. he's also the only one when they did the knock on the door he's actually the only one who's the same size as david baker which is kind of weird because david baker makes everyone look small but that water apparently is huge and look was looking david baker eye to eye so um but yeah it's it's great to see him get it he's i've thought for years that he's been deserving and if he's finally through the door yeah, and I'm very, very happy for him. Uh, Isaac Bruce uh, also got in. I uh, should also note that we both selected Atwater. Uh, we, actually, we both selected pretty much everything to, at the same time, although I did lose, and we'll get to that a little bit later. Uh, yeah, but I, I made it back. You, 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 somehow, you somehow managed to lose a tie. <laughs> <laughs> As only I can do. As only I can do, That's but... That's not easy to do, my friend. <laughs> uh there, There's a good joke there, and I just can't come up with what it is. I'll, I'll think of it an hour after I hang up. Uh, Isaac Bruce is in. Uh, we both called that. Uh, that was the most deserving wide receiver. The one who's brought might be celebrating the hardest right now is Tory Holt. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, Holt got off the semifinalist list, which is a big deal. And secondly, with Bruce out of the way now, the, I mean, he's still gonna have to contend with Reggie Wayne and Megatron next year. But at least the uh, same guy, same team is out of his way. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know if Holt gets in next year. Uh, but in the next two or three, we will see him in. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, Steve Hutchinson, a minor surprise. Uh, you said this was a very strong possibility that he was going to get the nod over Fanica, and he did. Uh, Fanica, going back yeah. to your earlier point, that might be the one who got hurt by Cowher's entrance to just sort of let people think that there's not a Steelers bias. And again, I don't believe that anyone in that room, when they're put, trying to put everything together, they're really thinking about what team they played for as much as are they most deserving. I really don't think that anyone's going there as uh, thinking, okay, we're going to screw over Raiders fans or Broncos fans or whatever fan base you, you want to have. Having said that, is it in the back of the mind of some of those people that, you know, maybe Pittsburgh's getting just a little bit too much and Hutchinson's almost as good? Yeah, so Hutch- Hutchinson has one fewer Pro Bowl and one fewer All Pro than Fanica. Right, so essentially the same position. Yeah, and, and we're not really um, talking and, about and, and, and the difference. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just saying, like, we're not really talking about someone who's that much in, more inferior to Fanica because that's not the case at all. No, 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 no. And I don't, I don't want to get this as anyway a bashing of Steve Hutchinson, who is deserving Hall of Famer. 
uh, and uh, and it deserves to be in there. I just think the order should have been reversed. Mm-hmm. Danica's problem, though, is we have a class of 20, and we already had Donnie Shell, and we already had uh, Troy Palomalu, who mm-hmm. we haven't brought up yet, but Palomalu made it. And with Cower, that's three of the 20 players already. And if we have we have Fanica as well, that's a full a full twenty uh, percent of the team of them getting in is all from one team, and it's just hard to hard to see exactly how how that would work, how that would make sense to some people. And it may be in the back of their mind. You're right. Um, there's also a big push for Baselli, who didn't get in um, out there, and that was your your guy for the tiebreaker. The, yeah, my tiebreaker um, again. Yeah. Which let's remind everyone, I lost a tie, which is very Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very polite of you guys. Um, <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, but it, 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 there, there's a push. It just, it just seems a little bit backwards that uh, that it is uh, not that's not Fanica, who is what an eight-time Pro Bowler and a six-time First Team All Pro, and who was the guy who's a seven-time Pro Bowler, Pro Bowler and a five-team First Team All Pro. Like again, we're splitting hairs here. But if it's one more in each category. It just in my head, it seems like the guy who has one more in each category should be getting in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if the if if the teams were reversed between the two players, I really feel that we have Fanica in and not Hutchinson. And then Hutchinson would just be getting in next year. Mm-hmm. So I I think we just reversed the order by year. But I think the the Steeler the number of Steelers getting in is a reason. But again, the number of people online saying that there's a Steelers bias game the Hall of Fame, just please kindly sit down. Uh, and I can say that on on almost every fan base, except for the Falcons fan base, because I don't know why you're not sort of more passionate about Tommy Nobis, because I didn't see a whole lot of that when the Centennial class was released of anger towards that. That one, no. But that's that's Atlanta for you. They're they're not. And I'll say I'll say it in other shows. I'll say it again. It's a terrible sports city. Yeah. It, it's not. It doesn't seem to be the most passionate sports city, except for the soccer team. The uh, Atlanta United has got massive support, which is interesting. Really? Um, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, they're they got a they got a pretty rabid fan base. One of the main reporters down in the Atlanta area is actually uh, a, a woman named Ricky Bevington. Uh, I grew up with. She grew up right around the corner from me, and so I follow her on stuff. And she's at all those events and things. So I know way more about Atlanta United than I probably otherwise would. Uh, but they have some, they have some rabid sports. They have some rabid soccer fans. They're probably right up there with, uh, Vancouver and Portland and Seattle. That's kind of the most rabid soccer fans out there, which is very interesting because it's not what I would have anticipated. Have you, I know I'm sort of segueing, but I'm kind of curious here. Have you ever been to an MLS game? I have. I actually went to the MLS championship game between the, Revolution and the L.A. Galaxy that was held at Foxborough, got to be 10, 12 years ago. This, uh, the Revolution team had uh, Clint Dempsey and, um, oh, I can't think of his name. Short guy from St. Louis, ESPN commentator right now. It's just completely out of my head. Taylor Twelman. So I had like two U.S. national team guys on it and lost one nothing and a heartbreaker. That was the first one I've been to. But I've been to a couple other Revolution games over the years. Okay, yeah. So... I've uh, been to three in three different cities, uh, Toronto, TFC, uh, and a week later, uh, my wife and I, we were, that was when our dollar was super str- was super strong, and all Canadians were sort of shopping in the United States, and we just, for whatever reason, we went to Columbus, just to sort of mix things up, okay. other, other than Buffalo or uh, this, uh, Grove City, Pennsylvania, so we went to Columbus, uh, went to a soccer game there. Uh, far more rabid in Columbus than Toronto, where, which can be a little. They'll fill up the they'll fill up a stadium, but they'll they're not that passionate, except for the Raptors. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. So I paid eighty dollars Canadian, which again this was at at par, to sit at seats that were half as good as the ones we went to in Columbus, and I, we paid twenty bucks. And then there was like a firework wow. display after because it was the Fourth of July, and to all Americans there. Born in the USA is not a patriotic song. Please stop playing it. <laughs> yeah, that one in uh, CCR's... Uh, Fortunate Son. <laughs> uh, Fortunate Son are the two most under, under understood or misunderstood songs uh, that get played at those things all the time. So, yeah. 
which, which is so funny too, especially with that one. It's like, it ain't me. It ain't me. It's right there in I, the chorus. I ain't no senator's son. I ain't no fortunate one. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> All right. Let, that's another tangent I didn't mean to go on. Let's go back to Pittsburgh. Troy Polamalu. There's, there's, <laughs> there's, yeah. Well, I, I'm the king of that. Oh, third game, Vancouver. Because I just wanted to say that I did three. Yay. Uh, that one, that was sort of a dead crowd too. Uh, Troy Polamalu. Uh, there's not really anything to say. Because we knew it. This, this was sort of set a long time ago. Is there anything really to add on Paul Amalu getting in on the first ballot? No, other than um, it was interesting the amount of hate Peter King was getting because King came out on Monday and admitted that he did not vote for Paul Amalu to get to the final five so that he could vote for three guys he considered uh, a marginal candidates because he figured Paul Amalu would get through. Um, and he was right. Uh, but yeah, he ended up voting for I think it was uh, Atwater, Baselli, and can't remember who the third one was. But he voted for all three of those three people instead of Palomalu, and that was like again Pittsburgh Twitter is some of the funniest Twitter there is. Um, uh, and they were just like how much Peter King absolutely hates the Steelers and everything else because he didn't vote for Palomalu because he wanted to see some other guys who thought were deserving it on, mm-hmm. which is interesting. Um, because like, even he said Palomalu was clearly first ballot. Uh, but yeah, that, that was an interesting side note that came out this year. Or that on, not this year, but on Monday. Yeah, and that's where I sort of become a... And I'm kind of with... Uh, I'll say, yeah, I'm with Pittsburgh Twitter on this. I always say vote for the best candidate. But I uh-huh. understand the argument for strategic voting. I do. Uh, don't like it, but I get it. Uh-huh. Uh, so fifth yeah. one, and that's where I lost the bet, uh, where I where I went down five beers, almost went down <laughs> six because we made a, the other one because we because we all picked the same five. Uh, your tiebreaker was James, uh, mine was Baselli. James got in. Uh, another again, another great, great inductee. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and I have, yeah, no, I, have, I have no problem with him getting in. I, I That would have been my number seven guy. Obviously, that would have been wrong. I should have had him as my number five guy, but what do I know? Yeah, uh, he it, it didn't surprise me. I told you at the time that I thought Edward James had a lot of uh, chance to get what we had as our Seymour spot mm-hmm. for both of us on this. Um, it's... Uh, it, it's not surprising he's in. He's the last of the triplets. I think we said when it came out that Holt probably helped Bruce and Wayne helped James just because now there's another player on the same team who's probably worthy uh, who, let's have two of them, well, we need to get one of them out of the way. Uh, and having the other guy on the ballot help both of them. Yeah. Um, although, go, going back to Bruce now, it is a little interesting to me that the uh, 2001 Patriots who beat those 2001 Rams have one Hall of Famer, and those those Rams teams now have five. Uh, but um, and they're going to have well, they're going to have a six too coming up here. So it's it's it, that is a little bit interesting how teams break down and things like that. But uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think any of us are particularly going back to James. I don't think any of us are particularly surprised he got in. It's a matter of when, uh, whether this year or another year. Um, so it, it's good to see James in and out of the way. So we also know. Uh, who the first five cut were out of the 15 finalists, uh, Butler, Holt, Mills, Reggie Wayne, Bryant Young. Uh, no su- real surprises there. I thought Wayne might have made the final 10, but realistically, it's not that big a surprise. No, and once Holt and Wayne are both gone, then Bruce is clearly going to be a Hall of Famer once the other two wide receivers are out. Um, so, yeah, that's not surprising. I don't think either of us were surprised that, um, that uh, Young... And uh, Mills were in that group. Uh, Butler, like I said, that he's one of those three guys who's on the first ninety, uh, on the first team for the nineties. Uh, he's one of those three guys, first teamer of the all decade. He person got hasn't gotten in yet, so it might have been a little surprising he didn't make it all the way through. But it's his first time in the ballot, um, so it, all those guys are are well. I'd say three of those guys have a pretty good shot of getting in. I'm not sure about Mills and Young. Uh, but the other three are going to get in at some point. It's just a matter of having 
13, 12, 13 good guys with the ballot and only five spots. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next five cut, uh, Baselli, uh, Fanica, Lynch, Seymour, Zach Thomas. Uh, Thomas, for him to sort of like go from the semis to the final 10 is, is huge, I think, and mm-hmm. long overdue. Yeah. Uh, Fanica, I wonder if he was not what, like six, seven. I mean, which kind of makes you wonder though, it, are they sort of might, do you think they might be prioritizing, uh, Baselli over Fanica? Cause we talked about how Fanica lost to Hutchinson this year. The previous year he lost to Maui. So could a third guy, a third offensive lineman overtop him again? I mean, it's possible. I mean, it is possible. I think that'd be silly, um, but it is possible. I mean, Hutchinson's at least you know, Mawai is the starting center in the '90s to all decade team. Hutchinson is one of these starting uh, guards on the all decade team. Fanuc is the other. Uh, Vasily's not anywhere on this, so I'm not sure. I mean, of course, the, the other two, the two backup guards are Larry Allen and Will Shields, so and they're both in as well. So it just seems to me like it has to be Fanica. At this point, you have the entire offensive line. You have all four tackles for the 90s team. You have three of the four guards, and the only one who's not on is the guy who got the most votes in Fanica. You got one of the two centers with Kevin Y. The other guy, by the way, is Golden Fruits of the Bears, who has never seen a ballot and isn't even getting the semifinal list. Um, so it, has to, it just has to be Fanica. I understand the... The feeling that Baselli is was a transcendent talent, but he just wasn't there long enough. He just wasn't compared to compared to Fatica. Like you, you can make the argument that Baselli will get in when you have a candidate who is not Fatica there. You can, you just you can't do it unless Fatica has somehow upset somebody. I can't imagine. Uh, there's no reason he won't get in next year. Unless they go with Baselli, and that could happen. I, I don't. I suppose it could, but I, yeah. can't, I can't imagine. Yeah. Uh, stranger things have happened. Oh, stranger things definitely have happened. But uh, they, again, they did have one year. They had four quarterbacks and nobody else. But uh, I, I just, I can't, I can't imagine that they would do that again. So. Yeah, and I hope that's uh, certainly the case. Uh, let's uh, stick with football. There's another significant retirement that happened today. And I want to see if you think he might have a Hall of Fame shot. Uh, Eric Weddle is uh, of the Rams, uh, but mostly with the Chargers, where he uh, had his greatest success. He's announced his retirement. Uh, six Pro Bowls, uh, two for Seam All Pros. I don't, I don't know that he's going to even make it to the semis, but he's definitely going to go to the College Football Hall of Fame. Well, he would definitely be the College Football Hall of Fame. I mean, he was uh, a Midwest Conference. Uh, defensive player of the year or in the NWC mm-hmm. uh, 2005 2006 well, I guess it's Mountain West and you can say Midwest um, but he was three times second team all pro uh, he was the NFL interceptions leader in 2011 um, he he has a very interesting case um, do you know when the 2010's all decade team is coming out have you seen that at all uh, no I haven't seen any news as to when that's coming out because allegedly they voted the day before they voted for the uh, the Pro Football Hall of Fame. They allegedly voted on Friday for that. And I thought we would have seen it at some point, but it hasn't come out yet. Um, but if Weddle makes one of those teams, it's going to bolster his op- his opportunity to get in. Um, but I think one of the things that's going to hurt him is I just went up and looked at the, the retirements this year. Um, so the retirements we have so far are, of course, Eli Manning and Luke Keekley. Uh, Antonio Gates, um, uh, and Darren Darren Sproles, Kyle Long, Eric Weddle, Vernon Davis, Lorenzo Alexander. Those are ones so far. But I mean, Peachley and and Gates are very likely to be first well, ballot Hall of Fame. Yeah, G- may- Gates will be a year ahead though because he didn't play last year. He didn't play at all last year. No. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, so he he's eligible for the 2024 vote. Really? I thought he had played at least a little bit this year. I guess he didn't. Yeah, so like uh, he, okay. he'll also well, uh, jump there, uh, which, I mean, if you're Jason Witten, then maybe that's not the worst thing to retire again. 
Hmm. Well, yeah, that, that that's true. Yeah, if Witten retires or Olsen retires, uh, that that would probably help them a little bit. But it, I guess I mean it's not it's not a necessarily hugely strong class. It's going to be interesting, and there, and there are no other defensive backs to look at. Um, so it may it may happen. I think he's got a shot at the hall. Um, the way he left San Diego um, with them getting mad because he stayed on the field at halftime to watch his kid perform. Uh, and, and then just basically told him, did you ever hear the story of how he was told he wasn't going to play for the team anymore? No, I didn't hear the story. So he, here's the story of this. So he was sitting in after, after game 17 of the 2000 and what year was that? 2004. 15 2016 season uh he was didn't play week 17 because he thought he was healthy enough to play but the team decided he wasn't so he's sitting in the hot tub with philip rivers and uh the coach uh, riley came by and was like what are you guys talking about and uh he said oh, we're talking about what we're gonna do with the team next year and uh and you got a lot of work to do and riley's like yeah what team are you playing with and he's like well i guess i'm not playing here that That's was essentially cool. how they told him he wasn't he wasn't welcome back. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. That, that's awful. Cla- cla- classy organization. Stay um, classy, San then, Diego. We're still San Diego yeah, then. Exactly. Still, it still should be San Diego. Yes. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. It'll be interesting to see if Weddle Weddle gets on. I think he's got a shot. What do you think? Uh, I think he sort of brought brought up a good point. Depending on what, on the class or how many people will retire at that point. Now, we're only like a week removed from the Super Bowl, so there could be a lot more retirements coming, including the quarterback, Phillip Rivers. We don't know. Because uh, Rivers... That's true. Yeah, Rivers is going to be a free agent. Uh, my guy, Drew Brees. Uh, Tom Brady, I guess, sort of had everyone fooled to sell Hulu. Yes. Yeah, well, I told you what, when you asked him what about that, I said I thought it might be just like something for a Super Bowl commercial. Yeah, and that's, why, that I right. that's why I lose every bet. Oh, oh. Yeah. Not every bet, because so, I got Kansas City, so I'm not, I, I'm not down a full uh, six pack. Yeah, I was. I was. I thought I was getting to a full six pack, and it looked like it for a while. And then Kyle Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan, all over the place. <laughs> so his his teams in the last in the last two times he's been in the Super Bowl in the last ten minutes of the fourth quarter, his teams have been outscored forty six to nothing. That's, that's he, brutal. He he. They had a 99.6% chance to beat the Patriots in, in that Super Bowl, what, three years ago now. And this year, he had a 95.8% chance to win the Super Bowl, both in the middle of the fourth quarter and lost both. So the ESPN tracker had a 98.5? I didn't realize that because I wasn't watching. Uh, no, it was, right. it, was, it, was, it was 95.8, I believe. Okay. So, but yeah, if I said 98.5, it's because I was at an event with a thousand people, lots of food and stuff earlier tonight. So I apologize for mixing up my numbers. Um, but yeah, no, it's 95.8, this Super Bowl and 99.6 in the Patriots Super Bowl. And both of them lost both times. Now you can blame that on the defense because the defense had to collapse in order for that to happen. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's Kyle Shanahan needs a hug. And probably some, and probably someone to help him because he was told. It's weird though, too, because he was told in the Patriots Super Bowl he was over aggressive, and that's why they lost. And this time, I feel he was over conservative, and that's why they lost. Who were you so, cheering for personally? Personally, I was rooting for Jimmy Garoppolo. Okay. So I, I did, whatever whatever team Jimmy Garoppolo was on is the team I was interested in. Yeah, my my um, wife as a Patriots because, fan said the same thing. Yeah, because I'm I'm a Patriots fan, and also I'm out here in, in Illinois. And he's a local kid from here, so Bears fans are all for the 49ers too. Yeah, he's from just around the corner from here. Yeah, so personally, I was cheering for Kansas City. Just uh, I think I've mentioned this before. When I have no rooting interest, I just uh, look at the fan base. So uh, the people of Kansas, as your president says, were, were very happy. Well, I'm sure the people of Kansas were, as were the people of Kansas City. Yes. Um, yeah, uh, I'm presuming most Kansas City, Kansas people are Kansas City fans, except for the ones out west, maybe uh, Broncos fans. But yeah, our, uh, as long as you take a Sharpie, anything is true. So. <laughs> Love it. So, um, yeah. So, oh, go ahead. But before we move on, are we going to talk about uh, next year's class and who's coming up and what we think? 
Uh, we're going to have a lot of dead space in the summer. So I think we'll save that one up. Okay. <laughs> but, okay. Yeah, well, when, yeah, when I'm sort of struggling to come okay, up with I just, material. I just, I was going to say, I think there are going to be three first ballot candidates for the possibility of a fourth next year. So I think there are only two spots open. You know what? Um, name name them all. In. We might as well. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, because I think I think there are three clear first ballots uh, with Peyton, Manning. Uh, well, I guess I guess you debate Megatron. Do you think, uh, do you think Megatron's a, uh, a uh, first ballot Hall of Famer? No. You don't? I don't. I think he's close to it. And I won't be upset if that's if that's what happens, but uh, it also depends. Like, so he's going to be coming up there now. Is he better? Is he, I don't think he's not even the the top wide receiver available now. That's because that's Wayne. You think Wayne's the top? I mean, you can make the argument Holt's also the top. Holt was first team, yeah, uh, for the decade. Yeah, uh, so. and I can, I can, I could sort of argue those two easily over over Megatron and I love Megatron it's like the best nickname in sports or one of mm-hmm. but I, I I don't think he's getting in first ballot I, I think he will get because, hit the finals in the first ballot but I think he's gonna have to wait a little bit that's my, okay. that's my gut right now okay well the other one who's definitely going to be a first ballot is Charles Woodson yes definitely so, so Woodson and Manning are definitely getting in. Uh, Megatron's a question. Jared Allen is also a good candidate, although I don't think I don't think he'll break through Seymour. Um, but he's at least going to be a semifinalist, I would mm-hmm. say. Yeah, I'd agree. Um, so there are four guys coming up. I I think there's there are two spots definitely taken. That leaves three others. One's going to go to wide receiver. One's going to go to Fanica, and then we'll still have that wild card again. Is it going to be Seymour? Is John Lynch waited long enough? Um, we'll see. But that that's a coming attraction. So, guys, we'll have a lot of time to talk about it again because no one's going to remember in August what we talked about in February. Let alone us. So. You're no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a couple more things. There's a lot of bourbon between now and August, my friend. <laughs> oh, for me, it's a lot of beer. Although I really should take yeah. advantage of the cheap rum on this island while I'm still living here. I think it's another year or so. Hopefully, wherever we go next, it'll be it'll be warm because I just don't want to go back to the cold. Some Canadian, I am. <laughs> so uh, I, hear, I, I, I hear Banff is lovely this time of year. I lived in a place further north than that when I was in Jasper. Okay. Yeah, that was uh, well, three hours north. No, gorgeous though, absolutely gorgeous. Having said that, well, you know, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Tropical Banff. So. Sunny tropical Banff, absolutely. I think that's in the Alberta tourism commercials. <laughs> yeah. So right. uh, the two other things. <laughs> so what's I, next, man? Uh, what's next up? Uh, well, it stays anonymous. We don't know who that lone voter is who didn't select Derek Jeter, and I guess we never will. Yeah. Uh, I said at the time when we talked about this last week that whoever that is should have just come out and said it at the time and taken the heat and gotten everything out. And since they didn't, it really shouldn't surprise me that they kept it anonymous. Yeah. And, and that's, uh-huh. uh, that's sort of one thing. Uh, I forget the name of that tracker. Uh, I think it's uh, not Mr. Tibbs is his Twitter handle. I forget, I forget his name. So he usually collects around 50% of those who, uh, who announce their ballots ahead of time. Uh, the baseball hall of fame then can announce stuff afterwards. Uh, or, the, or the writers that that say that want to go through that afterward like, after the vote is done. So I think that was uh, 325 mm-hmm. out of 300, and I'm blanking on the exact number. I want to say 382, but I might be off on that. So there's 70 or so ballots that I mean, if we really wanted to figure out, we probably could. Uh, at this point, I would love to hear his rationale. I mean, like you like we said earlier before we went online, was it an empty ballot? Was it a protest because he didn't want, uh, he didn't feel he was in the same class as Rivera. Who knows? We'll never know. Or did he, or did Derek sleep with his girlfriend, which is, might be the most logical of the three. Which girlfriend? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, no, I meant the reporter's girlfriend. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. I'm sorry, Mr. Archer. Yes. Uh, it's possible. Or he slept with the girlfriend and he didn't give him one of those uh, going away baskets that he was he used to be famous for. Isn't that awesome um, though? I wish that I could have yeah. done that when I was single. 
<laughs> like, yeah. Um, yeah, well, and then again, none of us are, were making uh, New York Yankees money when we were single, so. Um, well, th- that and I also don't yeah, look like Derek uh, Jeter. Yeah, that also, that is also true. Uh, yeah, it's, it's cowardly. I don't, I mean, the Baseball Hall of Fame is a lot more transparent than it used to be even half a decade ago, um, where you'd have a few writers come out, but most would hide it or whatever. Um, but it's still, if you're going to make a vote like that, just own it. Take the heat. You know, I mean, you, you have a, you have, you're one of 300 or less, whatever number it's fewer than 400 people in the world who has the opportunity to do something. Mm-hmm. And what you're doing is making a statement for eternity. I mean, it's a dumb thing to say because it's such a minor part of the world in a way, but you're, you're doing that. Own, own what you're doing. And if you can own what you're doing, you shouldn't be doing it in the first place. Yeah. So. And, and as much as I want to rip on the baseball writers and, and I do, uh, the reality is at least half of them, we know what they did because they chose to let us know. We don't know what's going on in any of these other rooms or these other ballots. And, sure. and also too, and I was just, ha- I just mentioned this on the last show I just did uh, that I recorded today. With the way social media is and the way people just get blasted, like maybe just people don't want that type of abuse. I can understand that point of view. I don't like right. it, but I get they, it. They give up. They give up your vote. Yeah, you're right. Can't can't take the heat. Get out. Yeah, if you if you if you if you can't take the heat on what you're doing, and you get upset because, or and you can't handle the fact that somebody's upset for who you voted for, then stop. You shouldn't be voting. Give it up. I'll apologize for the torrential downpour that is happening right now around me. I don't know if you hear that. I actually, I cannot hear that. Oh, you so. cannot hear that. Hopefully, sure it doesn't come, come out up. too good. Yeah, well, yeah. Caribbean it, rain. It may show up. It may show up when you do the uh, have the actual recording come out because uh, I hear a lot more things when that recording comes up than I do when I actually on the phone. Uh, usually, it's whistling frogs that I can't drown out. Yeah, I, I was wondering what that was. If you just had like a, a hinged thing going on, but no, it's it's frogs, huh? Yeah, it's whist- uh, literally it's whistling frogs. I didn't know they whistled hmm. until I moved down here, but that's what they're doing. Hmm. The Whistling Frogs opened for Mott the Hoople, didn't they? Uh, I think Mott the Hoople opened for them when they just started out. Uh, that makes more sense, actually, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I got one other thing I want to bounce off you. Uh, it feels like this is always going to be a, a topic of conversation. Uh, Pete Rose is applying for, for reinstatement. Uh, sort of citing the actions of the Houston Astros players who were not punished for their role in... Did they come up with a gate for this? I guess a uh, signal gate? Did they They should come up with something gate. I don't know why they didn't. Yeah, I, I, they haven't for some reason. Um, because Bygate was already taken, I guess. Um, but yeah, they, they... P. Rose's argument is interesting but not necessarily compelling to me um if i don't think the what the astros just because someone else gets away with something doesn't mean that what you've done counts any less in a way Mm -hmm. um just because the going back to spygate actually the uh the steelers got caught doing the exact same thing the patriots did the very next year and there's nothing made of it. Now I can bring that up all I want in conversations about it. Does it change the fact that the Patriots did what they were told not to do and got punished for it? You know what I mean? Just yep. because the Steelers got away with doing it doesn't mean the Patriots didn't do it. It's the same sort of argument here. Uh, whether or not Rose deserves to be banned for life is not something we have much control over. I personally think that uh, had he admitted it sooner, he'd already be in the hall. Um but the fact he's defiant for so long made it that he had made enough enemies in charge of baseball that there's there was no real shot for him. I think he will get the Hall of Fame after he's dead. Um, but I, I don't think I don't think that what happened to the Astros changes anything. Do you? No, I I, I, t- I totally agree with you. I don't think it's going to make a lick of difference. Uh, I always sort of hate the argument. Well, this guy was a piece of shit, so my piece of shit is not as bad. 
Mm-hmm. You know, that's not not a great right. analogy, but I mean, that's that's essentially what he's sort of saying. And I also agree with you that had he not waited so long, and also the timing of it. Okay, I got a new book coming out. Yeah, I guess, and I and I did cheat, <laughs> or didn't or he didn't cheat, but I did bet right. I did go against uh, a very defined rule of the job I had. And I can understand right. why some people never want to put him in. I'm not of that ilk. I, I certainly believe he's paid a lot of penance for it. Having said that, uh, he's also profited off that very thing. And he even said that. He said that to me when I had the chance to interview him. That, right. I was going to say, you're the, you're the one who's talked to him. So I have, yeah. And he, sa- he said it to me. And I've seen him say it in interviews uh, afterwards that that's part of the reason why he's still as famous as he is. Because mm-hmm. the Hall of Fame debate always sort of centers around him, and that hasn't really stopped. Uh, going back to that, and, I, and Rose obviously understands that better than anyone, even if he is reinstated, that doesn't necessarily mean he could get into the Baseball Hall of Fame. The writers won't be voting for that. It's the, He would be placed on, a, on a, a Veterans Committee ballot, which he still has to make. Right. Yeah, he still has to get on that ballot first. So yeah, yeah it's not yeah. like all of a sudden the commissioner's like, "Hey, you're for, you're forgiven. You can get in." And to my knowledge, unless there's someone I'm not thinking of, unless we want to count Bud Selig in that, and some of the managers, no player who's ever been associated with anything dirty has ever been chosen by a veterans committee. I don't think, unless I'm, I'm not thinking of someone off the top of my head, which could be. There's no one who springs to mind with me as well, but I. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I mean, the only yeah, the only people I can think of, not in baseball, in in, in football, Alex Karras just got in, and Karras and Horning mm-hmm. were both banned for four years for betting on football games. Right. Um, but they're they're now both in the Hall of Fame. But baseball doesn't have any anything analogous to that to that that I can think of. But baseball will always sort of like uh, hide under the veil of character. Football really doesn't. Yeah, no, football doesn't do that very much. It's interesting, though, the character in baseball only really cuts one way. Like, someone, Curtis Granderson just retired this week as well. And mm. someone brought up the fact that he was a very good player, but he was one of the single nicest guys in history of baseball, and just a wonderful human being, and did a lot of wonderful things for I read for that, the too. In, in, yeah. And, and, and that the, uh, the character clause is going to help him get in, because Curtis Granderson's not a Hall of Famer. No. Um, Good player. But, but they don't, they, it's just it was being to the point that they only ever make the character clause one way and not the other. So, If that were the case, Dale Murphy would have got in. Yeah. Well, I, I still don't understand why Dale Murphy's not in. But um, uh, he's, he's probably three or four on my list of guys, so I just don't quite get who why they're not in. Because at the, the, the time Dale Murphy was playing, I was a kid, and there was nobody who thought that Dale Murphy wasn't a Hall of Famer when he retired. Uh, and then all of a sudden he got up to the ballot and he just wasn't. And I, I, I don't understand. So, um, but anyway, going, going, uh, is there anything else you want to say on this? Cause I have one other thing I wanted to bring up actually about the Astros cheating scandal. Uh, no, that's, that's the only thing I sort of wanted to touch on that. Uh, just about like uh, the, whole, so, the whole Pete Rose, but yeah, uh, more on the Astros, please. Well, it's actually not the Astros. It's actually about a guy who has been eligible for Hall of Fame and hasn't gotten in and his reaction to it. Did you see Will Clark's reaction? No. What did you say? To the whole Astros cheating scandal? So Will Clark, uh, who, for those who are under the age of, you know, 30, was a hell of a first baseman for the San Francisco Giants, mostly, in his career. Um, Will the Thrill got was on a ballot. He's been on some of these uh, veterans' ballots at this point. Um but he basically said, scoff at the idea that the Astros, what they were doing was particularly bad. He's like, they're just the ones who got caught and everybody's doing this. And, uh, and, and that this whole recrimination against the Astros is just going to blow up in the, basically in baseball's face uh, because everybody's cheating somehow. And they're going to uh, – it, it, the next one that comes along, they're going to have to get even worse. Um, and it was just interesting comments about it because he was, he was basically laughing at the whole idea that what the Astros were doing was some novel idea. And that's been going back. Yeah, he said he basically brought it back to the La Russa White Sox in the 80s that everybody knew was doing stuff. Um, so it, it, was, it was just interesting to see someone who's got a lot of clout within the baseball, uh, 
baseball history. He's not a Hall of Famer, but he's a Hall of Very Good. Uh, come out and just say, yeah, this is dumb. Everyone's doing it, and this is just going to end up backfiring for baseball. And so. I, I like how you brought up uh, La Russa because that's some uh, – I know that's a name that uh, – you're fond of bringing up uh, quite a bit as because he's he's in the Hall of Fame as a manager, and he's certainly one who's he hit a lot of things, uh, turned a lot of blind eyes under that mullet. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and the cynic out there will say that he's also very good friends to Bill Belichick. Um, but uh, oh, I didn't uh, know I didn't know they were friends. Pr- oh yeah, he he and Belichick are really good friends, um, but it. It's just interesting, and I'm, I'm not the one who brought who brought Larus up. It was actually Will Clark brought Larus up. Oh, okay, but um, I, oh, okay, I was I don't know why I was thinking that was a name that sort of came, came up a bit. Uh, when we, well, I mean, I, I, brought, I brought Larus up before. Yeah. I brought Larus up before as the one of the straws that says we don't care about steroids getting in because if once Tony Larus and Joe Torre, who managed some of those guys, who are accused of of um, using steroids, Bobby Cox got in then too. I, there aren't as many Bobby Cox players who are on this list. But once those two guys are in who benefited from managing those guys and Seelig's in, who is the, the, the uh, commissioner who turned a blind eye for so long and eventually did something. Once those guys are in, it's really hard to me to keep the other guys who are actually doing it out. Mm-hmm. Um, with the exception of uh, people who cheated afterwards or someone like Rafi Palmero who, basically directly lied to Congress knowing he's getting suspended like a month later. Um, did, did Paul so, know he was going to get suspended at that point? He ha- yeah. Cause he'd already, he'd already had his appeal. Oh, okay. Or okay. He, I'm, he had I'm his, off on my time. He had his, he had his appeal. He, sorry. He had his, he knew about the negative test and he had his appeal scheduled at that point. So the appeal hadn't actually been heard at the time he did that, but come on, dude. Like he w- he was suspended within a month. It was like within three weeks. So it was yeah. I don't know. Just the, he, that man. He probably had he come out and done something, could have gotten himself in the hall still. But there's no chance Rafi Palmeiro was ever getting it at this point, despite his numbers. Yeah, he's uh, always considered him one of sort of like I don't want to call him compiler because that's not really fair. But in some ways, he's one of the most unluckiest players ever just to his position. He okay. missed out on a lot of all stars because there were so many great offensive first basemen at that point, point in time. So he didn't right. get a lot of do. He played for a lot of shit teams, but you know, at the same time though, <coughs> what's Palmer. So I always found him unlucky in, in that aspect. But he also didn't have much of a personality. That was the only time anyone ever saw him actually showing off anything was during Congress. And I remember the reaction to that. Like, that was the most positive stories ever I'd ever heard about Palmero. Because usually you don't hear any stories about Palmero. He's just there. Right. He was just, uh, you know, the, the guy with the, with, the, with the thick mustache that looked like your uncle. Right. Who, who just happened to be a great yeah. athlete. But, you know, you'd have to be sort of told that, oh, you're an athlete? Because if you would just meet him there, like, you're not thinking. He, does, he, doesn't ha- he didn't have a presence. He didn't have an aura. Like, a lot, and that, that stuff exists. Right, and, and he, I mean, he played 20 years. He only was an all-star four times. Was um, it four? Or, I thought it was three. Okay, he, either way, three or four, it's not a lot. He was all-star as a 23-year-old with the Cubs in 88 uh, in 91 with the Rangers and in 98, 99, 98 with the, with the Orioles and 99 with the Rangers. 99 as a 34 year old was the highest he ever fi- finished an MVP with, uh, with five, uh, when he finished fifth. And he also won that gold glove where he only played first game <laughs> for 16 games. I don't remember that. Yes. Yeah, that. yeah. Cause I'm certain research a big thing. Cause you know how I do that awards stuff, right? Uh, so yeah. Yeah. So Paul Merrow. What I, I'm gonna like work on eventually. I, I've been saying this for years, and I never get around to it. Like the act, the, the worst award winners in sports, and that's number one: winning a gold glove when you're not actually playing in the field. There's nothing worse than that. I can't think of one. No, it's yeah, it's it's pretty bad. Although I do have to say the uh, 
what was it? CBS Sports came out with the, their list. So uh, Mahomes became the 33rd quarterback to win the Super Bowl. 33rd different quarterback to start the team, start for the team that won the Super Bowl. So they took that opportunity to divide the quarterbacks into uh, all-time greats, then like the very good, and then the less than great quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. And uh, so the list had numbers one, two, and 33 correct, and everything else was completely insane. So one was Brady, two was Montana, 33 was Trent Dilfer. Okay. Number three, the third greatest quarterback ever to win a Super Bowl. Who do you think they had? They uh, just saw this. Okay. I didn't see it. So if, if, uh, so it can't be something obvious then. If, if, uh, if it was all off, let's see. Who would be something that wouldn't make a lot of sense? Theisman? It was Pat Mahomes. Already the greatest. Oh, come on. They, they had him in third place already. And I'm like, he's been in the league three years. He played one game his first year. Granted, he made the, he made the championship game, game year two and won the Super Bowl year three. But he won an MVP where he was terrible for three quarters of that game, let's be honest. Absolutely. He was great in the fourth quarter, but he was terrible for three quarters. Uh, and, and he, congratulations, he won a Super Bowl. You know who else won a Super Bowl when he was younger and hasn't won anything since? The guy that had number seven on that list, Aaron Rodgers. Like, there's, uh, it was just, it, just the whole recency bias of things. That that was, that was one of the things I was just like, are, are you, you're just trolling for people to get mad at you right now, right? Uh, but yeah, it, that, that, the, the 16 games of Palmero, that was one of the things I thought of. Like, congratulations, he's won one Super Bowl. He's already the third greatest player of all time, or the quarterback of all time. That's crazy. So, and they, and whoever compiled the list, they clearly never seen people like Mark Rippin or Doug Williams or in the play, because they were super low on that list. Um, and I don't even know if it had to do with how great their career was, given how great their career was, he's too high, or how well they played in the Super Bowl, because if it was how well they played in the Super Bowl, he was also too high. Um, so it, the whole thing was, the whole list was ridiculous, but the, that just came out to me when you were talking about the, the worst awards of all time. Just giving it to somebody ahead of time before they've done anything, is, or haven't done enough to be up there is kind of crazy. So anyway, that was a complete random tangent. The the only thing I can think of is if they're, where they could even try to remotely justify it, is if they're saying, okay, number three based on his whole year, if you're just going by that calendar year, not calendar year, but a but season he only, year. But, but this calendar year, he missed four games. That's true. Yeah, okay, I, just, I, just, I just realized that as soon as I said that out loud. Uh, I, I don't know. I got nothing. Where was Breeze on that? Yeah. As a Saints fan, I have to ask that. Um, I'm, I'm looking it up. I had it off the top of my head. Um, Super Bowl winning. Let's see here. Uh, I, I'm going to have to look it up, so give me a second. Yeah, no worries. <clears throat> um, is there anything else you want to talk about while I'm looking this up? Let's see. Yeah, uh, pretty soon we're going to have the basket. I, that's probably going to be more for two weeks from now. Uh, Basketball Hall of Fame is going to be coming up uh, soon with the fi- announcement of the finalists. One name that I want to bring that I'm go- I'm going to bring up later. I know I'm going to bring it up now. Actually, Chris Bosh is he a first ballot Hall of Famer to you? No. No. No, I agree. And then and that's and it's and, and well. With the caveat that it's the Basketball Hall of Fame and their their version of first ballot and Hall of Fame is very different than any other sports. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's you know I, I don't think I don't think so, particularly in comparison with who he's up against. So no, Wait, do I think he'll be in the second ballot? Yes, but I don't think he'll be in the first. Yeah, I, th- I think they're going to probably hold him off uh, just for that because they do need another name there, and there's not really a whole lot coming up. Yeah. Uh, by the way, they had Drew Brees at thirteenth. Thirteen. He's the thirteenth. Yeah. So here's here's, here's, oh. here's the countdown from thirty three down. Okay. Yeah. Please. Thirty three Dilfer. Thirty two Hostetler. Mm-hmm. Thirty one Rippin. Thirty Brad Johnson. Twenty nine Doug Williams. Twenty eight Jim Plunkett. So <laughs> they're not on the Plunkett for Hall of Fame bandwagon. 
27, Nick Foles, 26, Jim McMahon, 25, Joe Feisman, 24, Phil Sims, 23, Joe Flacco. They call that category the good enough, okay? So the elite is 22 to 12, which is 22, Bob Greasy, 21, Len Dawson, 20, Ken Stabler, uh, 19, Joe Namath, 18, Roethlisberger, 17, Aikman, 16, Star, 15, Bradshaw, 15, oh, sorry, 15, Bradshaw, 14, Wilson, 13, Breeze, 12, Ward. I'm sorry, um, who's number so 12? So the top 11. I'm sorry? Who's number 12? Uh, Kurt Warner. Okay. Okay, so Russell Wilson at 14 is a little crazy to me too. But anyway, 11, Roger Staubach. 10 is Eli on this list. Mm -hmm. Uh, 9, Steve Young. 8, Brett Favre. 7, Aaron Rodgers. 6, John Elway. 5, Johnny Unitas. 4, Peyton Manning. 3, Patrick Mahomes. 2, Joe Montana. 1, Tom Brady. So Mahomes already has done more than Peyton Manning. Wow. Yeah, and and, uh, John Elway and... Uh, Drew Brees. Wow. <laughs> also, more, more than the all-time pass leader, passing leader in NFL history. So. And none of this is a shot at Mahomes. I mean, I love watching him play. And, Again. Yeah. But yeah. I think Patrick Mahomes would even say that's stupid. I do. I, but Patrick Mahomes seems like a decent enough human being. He, and he's going to be like, no, there's no way. There's no way Patrick Mahomes thinks right now. There's no way Patrick Mahomes thinks his career right now is better than Peyton Manning's. <laughs> there's a zero yeah. percent chance of that. I'm willing to bet there's that Patrick Mahomes doesn't think his career is better than Len Dawson. I was just gonna say, right yeah, now. yeah, and right now it's not. It, it, that's <laughs> it's not. It, and Len Dawson's 21 on this list, so um, wow, it, 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 that's the same team. So yeah, I don't know who came up with it. I mean, Nick Wright, who uh, from from their system, who's a Chiefs fan, is is one of the single worst commentators there is. In sports, and maybe it's his list. I'm not sure who came up with it, but it's from CBS Sports, and uh, yeah, it's it was it was really bad. So, well, any idiot who's got a website can make stupid lists. I know I'm proof. Hey, but they're your stupid lists. <laughs> yes, they are. Yes, they are. <laughs> All right, Evan, it's, a, it's been a pleasure as always, and we'll see what comes up in the next week. Maybe another uh, big football retirement. Tis the season. Tis the season. Well, one more question. Are you, um, I know we did the fictitious, uh, we did fictitious sports hall of fame, or, but we never actually oh, announced the well, fictitious yeah, uh, let's, yeah, we'll talk, hall of fame, did yeah. we? Uh, no, we haven't. We'll talk about that next week. We should do that next week. Next week's a little bit of a lull before the basketball. We should do that. Yeah, because I don't think the basketball hall of fame is going to be announced the finalists. Uh, usually they do it all-star weekend, so that might be on the Saturday, I, I, I think. I think I think I heard them say uh, when Brian passed away that the actual announcement was going to happen on Valentine's Day. Oh, on Valentine's Day, okay. Yeah, so we're at, today's the sixth, so that would be the day after we we uh, record this. Yeah, so then so, we can sort of take um, a look at that. I think also too at that point, usually they announce also the direct elects and the different committees that they have. Okay, yeah, that makes sense too. So, cool. All right. Thanks so much, Evan, and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks. You as well, man. Take care. All right. Bye. Bye.